welcome to the Church of St. Francis of Assisi as we celebrate the Eucharist on the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is being celebrated for the intention for the repose of the soul of Giuseppina Dizio, Gio Ed, Lisa Pagliani, Richard Salas, and Ruth McNicholas. Please silence your cell phones before the liturgy begins. A second collection for the renovation of the church will immediately follow our regular collection. Father Reuben has requested that masks be worn in the church and the outside sanctuary. Thank you for your cooperation in keeping our church a safe place for everyone. Before we begin, we ask all new parishioners and those visiting our parish to please stand so we can recognize you. We thank you for joining us in the celebration of the Eucharist. Now let us all stand and greet those around you. If possible, present yourself by giving your name. The St. Michael prayer can be found on the virtual worship aid. If you'd like to pray along, you can scan the QR code on the chair in front of you. And now let us pray together the prayer of St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Now please remain standing and let us take a moment to center our hearts and our minds in sacred silence. Let us all sing together our gathering song, Gather Us In. in the rich and the hot 
morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. Blessed are you. We are here once again to render worship to our God, to our Lord Jesus Christ, and to listen his beautiful message to us. And uh, he calls us a blessed, but at the same time, gives us a warning if we do not go accordingly, according to the will of God. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us invite the Holy Spirit to be with us, to move us during this Mass, and internalize the Word of God that will be hearing, and let it bear fruits. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have been sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in my heart and done, and whatever to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Yeah. 
let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his, his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. It leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? 
If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes towards his disciples, he said, <coughs> Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice, leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For your ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in the same way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. What a blessing. We have this beautiful, beautiful day. Most of us have heard the Beatitudes before. And yet, if we meditate on them, the meaning can touch even deeper in our hearts. Jesus describes how to follow him closer and find joy. It may sound confusing because this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us the complete opposite of what our society tells us. 
we hear on TV and radio that if we have enough money, friends, or whatever they're trying to sell, that we will be happy. The word beatitude means the greatest happiness or blessedness. And Jesus know what will truly bring us lasting joy. Not just happy for the moment when we get what we want. The poor in spirit, Jesus is talking about are people who recognize that they don't have it all together. Those who realize their need for God. When we understand that, that God is in control, then we don't have to feel like we need to be in charge. And that is when we find freedom. When we really, really know that our lives come from God and all the gifts that God gives us, that everything belongs to Him. We are humble and grow to love to love Him more. And that is why the Kingdom of Heaven is already available for those of us who are poor in spirit. The next Beatitude says, those who mourn will be comforted. Here Jesus is telling us that if we recognize and admit where we are falling short or where we can do better, we can feel sad about that. But be assured that He will comfort us. God is a good Father. He doesn't want to shame or, or guilt us about our mistakes. But He does want us to be aware of them and the harm they can cause us and other people. If we, we cannot see what we are doing, how can we do better? If we do not see what we're doing wrong, how can we do better? Because every parent loves their children and wants them to learn from their mistakes or bad behaviors. When God shined His light on our sins, it is because of His love. So we can wake up to our faults and do better. And when this happens, we feel true sadness at hurting our loved ones. But our God is faithful. He comforts us and free us from our sins. And that is when we experience joy. <clears throat> when we feel that forgiveness. And the rest of Jesus' recipe, <clears throat> it is easier to understand. He not only told us about how to be peaceful, meek, meaning gentle, merciful and humble, by example in the way that He spoke and lived. 
Jesus showed us by His passion and death on the cross how we should act when we are persecuted or be insulted. And these are not easy instructions for the road to heaven. And yet, the more we practice them, the more we grow in virtue. And the fruits of the Holy Spirit will grow in our lives. Then our attitudes will be more like Jesus' attitude. We were created and loved by our Father in heaven and to be in relationship with Him. God enjoys us. And the Bible says that He delights in us. But yet, when we are not in good relationship with Him, or even worse, we don't even know God at all. We hunger for that something to fill that emptiness in our heart. St. Thomas of Aquinas says that the enemy tries to tempt us in four ways. With power, pleasure, honor, and wealth. That is why the second half of the Gospel reading is a warning. Because Jesus knows us so well and how we can fall into the trap <coughs> feeling that emptiness in our lives with desires that only lead us to wanting more the same until they become addictions. Addictions that we can feel held on earth. But He doesn't want to scare us. He wants us to be safe because He is the Good Shepherd. Jesus knows what we want and to be like and praised. He knows about social media and how we can get sucked into it or we worry about having enough money or enough food to fill that void that only He can fill. My brother-in-law Dan, God rest his soul, taught me a lot about surrender. He was a member of AA for 20 years and he was one of the most humble people I have ever met. And these members of AA, in order to obtain sobriety, this brave man and woman first have to admit their addiction. And secondly, acknowledge they are powerless over it. They acknowledge that they are depend on a higher power. Are we brave enough to do that? When we are, we can allow the Lord to be ruler of our life. And when we allow that to happen, we will be blessed. We will feel free. And we will have that peace that we hunger so much. I know it's really hard to look in the dark corners of our hearts 
and admit we have given into temptation. But Jesus came to set the captive, the captive free. It is our choice to be slaves of money, power, pleasure, and honor. But it's also our choice to be free, to enjoy the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The love, the joy, the peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So I invite you to join me in meditating on today's readings of this week to seek that light of God and ask Him to shine that light in our weaknesses and to have true repentance. Then we can be free and that is when we will find joy we will find joy and the kingdom of heaven will be ours. We invite the catechumens to uh, please come forward. As well as the candidates, of course. Let us extend our hands for a blessing. My dear friends, our community now sends you forth to reflect more beautifully more deeply upon the word of God, which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support and our prayers for you on this journey, for we look forward to the day when we can share fully at Christ's table. And we pray, amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only of the Son of God, born of the God of the fallen ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Conscious and sensual with the Father, who dream all things in the beginning, and for salvation, salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and sin came in. For our sake he was crucified and upon us Pilate, he suffered death and he was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God who sent his own Son for our salvation, let us offer our prayers to him. For our parish and community, may we promote and defend the beautiful gift of marriage and the dignity of all human life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, as they continue to live their vocation of love, may they witness to the eternal love of God and grow closer to each other daily. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from troubled or broken marriages, may they come to know healing and forgiveness through the Father's endless love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those discerning their vocations, may they be guided by the Holy Spirit working in their hearts to recognize and respond to the call of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the homebound and the sick. For Terry Gutierrez, Alberto Hernandez, Maria de la Luz Hernandez, Dennis Easterling, Emmanuel Perez, Joy DiMaggio, Marta Hernandez, Natividad Hernandez, and for their caregivers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, for Teresa Gallagher, Ricarda Mata, Gerardo Martin Herrera, Lazaro Morales, and Ruben Bautista. May they rest forever in the eternal peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Gisapina Dizio, Gio Ed, Lisa Pagliani, Richard Salas, Ruth McNicholas. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions written in our book of petitions and for those intentions we carry in the quiet of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving God, source of all wisdom, we humbly ask that you hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing together our song for the gifts. Oh, how blessed. Surely will have their fill. 
Brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And it may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is a truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, all creator of the world and the source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of your Holy Spirit and lead her along the path of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Oh, holy, holy. 
glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in, on our journey to of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, for so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the blood and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you things, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seat, seated at the, your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you this bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose blood and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with the Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, John and Ramon his auxiliaries, with your bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire, entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, 
we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the, in the peace of your Christ, especially those for whom this Mass is being offered. And all of the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. They are in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, St. Francis of Assis and St. Clare, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's commands and from the by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another now a sign of that peace. Him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us all sing together the song for communion, unless a grain of wheat.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just listen to some announcements. Attention all ministries. The sign-up sheet for Ash Wednesday servers is posted in the sacristy hall. Please see the sacristans to sign up. Thank you for your help in ministry. Altar servers, welcome back. We invite all adults that want to help serve on the altar. For more information, please get in contact with the parish office. Conditions apply. What is a synod? It is a journey together towards renewal. Synod is not another program or a new initiative. Having a synod is just part of synodality, which is a way of being a church, not just an event or program. It is a path or a journey towards renewal that the people of God take together with each other. When we walk together as a people of God, it is called synodality. Why a synod? To learn together what the Holy Spirit is saying to our church today. Many Catholics have stopped practicing their faith. Countries, communities, and families are divided. The church is inviting participants to encounter one another, listen to each other's experiences, and discover together what God is calling the church to do in these times. Beginning the weekend of Saturday, March 5th, the second collection will be for the annual Catholic Appeal. Envelopes can be found at all the entrances to the church. The youth ministry is having a blanket drive for the month of February. Please leave your donation of a new blanket inside the boxes titled Blanket Drive at the entrances of the church. The last day to drop off is February 27th. Thank you in advance for your generosity. The youth ministry invites all high school teens to their youth night on Sunday, February 20th. Inside the parish halls from 6.30 to 8 p.m., come join us for a night of fellowship and prayer. More information on the church bulletin <coughs> or by calling the parish office. Please be sure to take home a copy of the bulletin or visit our parish website at St. Francis of Assisi Vista for more information regarding the announcements just made and activities at our parish. And finally, the Knights of Columbus will be, having, will be serving coffee, donuts, and tamales up at Father Ullman Hall. So be sure to stop by and see them. Dear community of St. Francis, um, beautiful parishioners with like precious faith, I have a favor to ask, um, and it's for your benefit as well. Um, a group of us are leaving this Tuesday morning for a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and um, I'm sorry, Sister Madeline, it's not Ireland, it's Israel, okay? <laughs> anyway, um, our pastor, we're very blessed, our pastor is going to be joining us and leading us spiritually throughout these, these I believe it's 12 days, and uh, I'm just, we're excited. But we need something from you. You already know what it is, and some of you are doing it already. Please pray for us in our absence. Pray for us. Uh, as you well know, uh, Israel uh, is a long ways away, and um, some of us are well, let's put it this way. Our circulatory systems aren't working as well as they used to, and so we don't want a thrombosis or a, um, something else. So uh, what I'd like you to pray for is not so much our health, 
but to pray that we truly can bring back and share with you a wonderful spiritual experience. Amen? Amen. So I appreciate all of your love, your support, and we appreciate your prayers for, I believe there's 35 of us who are going. So anyway, praise God. Amen. We will pray for you. Let us rise. If Jesus was to participate at the Super Bowl game, <laughs> what would, you, would he do? Certainly he would like all to win, to be blessed, and he will be sad if we lose. As we we are so interested to watch today. Let us remember the game of our life. We need to be always the winner so that we remain blessed. Enjoy the day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all sing together our sending forth song, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.